This is the singing show. When I'm your host, Mr. Dave Rotslow. This is the show where we interview special guests through song. Won't you come along? Hey everybody, welcome to the singing show. Today we have a very special guest, my good friend and charming fellow, Emilio Garcia. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Dave. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for joining us. So this is the singing show and we talk about music and singing. What were some of your first musical experiences? Well, I remember back when I used to be just a little baby boy and my aunt would sit me on her lap at her piano and I would bang out melodies on the piano. A lot of times I would play some montunos, like Latin music. Other memories I have, when I first started playing saxophone, I would take all of the angst that you have as a teenager and put it into this music and somehow it had all this cathartic quality to work through all the emotions that I had heal the things that I felt I needed to heal and you play professionally while you were still in high school what was that experience like? Did you feel the, the coolest kid in town? Or were you kind of a nerd or a little bit of both? <laughs> oh, I felt pretty cool, yeah. It was in a crazy scene where all these high school kids would take over a club and we'd invite all our friends, the guys in the band, and because we were in the band, we were like the center of everything. But for me, it was so much about that internal experience of music and sharing it with other people. So I wasn't all that into the scene. I kind of stayed above it all or below it all. And 12 years ago, you gave up being a musician professionally to focus on music more spiritually and creatively. What went into that decision for you? Do you know how a jazz musician makes a million dollars? <laughs> Start off with two million. <laughs> if you do enough gigs, you'll get down to one million. <laughs> It's a hard, hard business, a hard, hard business. There's lots of people with talent, but not a lot of money to go around. So when I saw the state of things, I thought to myself, I don't want to become one of those bitter musicians that I know. Because this business is so hard, and music is something I love, I decided to keep on playing for love and stop playing for money. And that has made me so very happy. And how does music manifest in your life today? <laughs> The most honest answer I can give you now is music manifests everywhere and everything all around us and everywhere and everything within us 
To me the first instrument is your heart About two weeks after conception There are these two little chords Like little strings It's not even a heart yet But they start beating Before there's a heart, there's a beat That music that keeps you alive From before you were you there's music there in the heart, that's the first instrument. There's music in everything vibrating. There's music in every conversation. There's this back and forth. There's this push and pull. The sound and silence as the train going by. As the cars and the traffic. The sound of people. To me, music manifests everywhere and everything and you've been working on kirtan music and leading singing meditations how do those events and that performance transpire kirtan music is this hindu tradition it's a devotional kind of hymnal thing where people sing the name of God. And the idea is everything you'll ever find, everything you'll ever need, whatever you need to become, you will become in the name of God. So we sing these mantras. We sing, and it's usually back and forth, call and response. Something about this rhythm, this push and pull, can create this meditative space. It can also create this ecstatic space. It can go deep into a trance. It can get totally whirled up into bliss. That's what I do with kirtan and singing meditation. Would you be willing to do a kirtan with me right now? Absolutely. I'll do kirtan anywhere, anytime. Something about our present moment in Right now, I'm going to share with you one of my favorite mantras. Aye, 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 aye. This is a phrase in Hebrew. It means I am. Aye, 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 aye. When Moses asked the burning bush, Who are you? The burning bush replied, Aye, 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 aye. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am, 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 I am